Hey guys, it's that time again for small groups. Are you looking for ways to get more involved here at the Star? Do you have leadership skills and want to facilitate one of our small groups? Well, we're looking for you. Scan this QR code or go online to beatmetothestar.net and click the banner that says Small Group Leadership. We're looking for you. We're in the midst of 21 days of prayer and feasting, and we've had an amazing time praying corporately. I pray that you join us every morning at 6.30 a.m. on our conference call line or on Pastor Beaver's YouTube channel. And get ready for our grand finale, Saturday, August 24th, 9 a.m. at our Birmingham campus. Let us all come together and pray and watch God move. If you or someone you know needs member care in a form of a hospital visit, a phone call, mobile communion, or prayer, please contact our member care by going online to beatmetothestart.net, click the banner that says member care, and give us the information we need to contact you. You can also text the word we care to 1-833-270-3616. Again, that's the word we care to 1-833-270-3616. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day number 19 of 21 Days of Prayer and Feasting. A catchy kind of way to say that we are focused on prayer, but you are able to eat at the same time. I want to say thank you for waking up early and tuning into the prayer line. And thank you for tuning in with us on these 19 days. We are almost there. Be not weary in well-doing, but in due season we reap if we faint not. Reap what, Pastor Beavers? I believe the Bible teaches us that men and women ought to always pray and not faint. So what are we reaping? We are actually reaping the manifestation to the answer of our prayers. Now, some of you in 21 days of prayer and feasting, you've already seen the hand of the Lord move. You've already seen him answer your prayer. If that is you, I want you to put some testimonies in the chat. And if that is you, I also want you to email. I want you to email me personally, Pastor TB at nrschurch.org. That's on the screen. Pastor TB at nrschurch.org. I think we do a wonderful job of praying, but we need to do more job, uh, a more, a, a, a better job of sharing testimonies of how God moves so that others can be encouraged. There's no secret of what God can do. If he's done it for others, he'll do it for you. Do me a favor. I need you to share this. When you share it, it gives us access to the people who follow you and access to the people that you have influence over, and it helps us to spread this prayer call and the gospel of Jesus to a much, much larger audience. When you tap the share button, the link is going to pop up. Forward that link to five people in your text message or email contacts. Invite them to pray, and also text the word STAR to one 270 3616. That will make you on our mass text messaging list. And the benefit is that you get the news firsthand before it ever hits the TV, the radio, social media. Get it firsthand by way of your cell phone. Text start at 1 833 270 3616. Now, the grand finale, I'm pumped and I'm excited, of 21 days of prayer and feasting is this Saturday. This Saturday, all roads lead to the star, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I want to see your face in the place. Tell Lottie Dottie and everybody, make sure that you are present and accounted for at our main location. That's 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And if you're interested in being a small group leader as we grow larger, we want to grow smaller. Everybody's not going to know everybody, but everybody can and should be known by somebody in small groups, provide an intimate setting for that to be able to take place. Go to the website, click the you see on the screen and go ahead and register your small group. I'm not by myself. I have a powerful, powerful woman of God with us on this morning. Hey, listen, she's been a part of our church for a long time. She may even remember when I was born or she may remember 
when I was a kid just after I was born. She started coming to this church after she attended UAB College, the University of Alabama at Birmingham. My uncle, Dr. Christopher Chappelle, used to be the minister of music of this church. He attended UAB. Both of them met uh, at UAB, and he, he, he brought a plethora of people to the Star Church, and she was one of those people. So she's been rocking with us and hanging in with us for a long time. Joined this church under the ministry and the leadership of my grandfather, Dr. Tommy Chappelle. She is in the health field, but she's not just a health professional. She's a powerful prayer warrior and woman of God. I have none other than Mrs. Valerie Jones. Look into the camera say what's up to the people. What's up, people? That's, wow, that introduction. Yeah, you didn't know I knew all that, did you? <laughs> Look, 40 years. Yeah, 40 years. You've been a part of the Star Church for 40 years? 1984. That means I was two years old when you came. Two years old. What a blessing. I can sure enough say they don't make them like they used to. Sure don't. You know, people say, Pastor, I'm with you. And the next moment, they gone. Yeah. But, man, when you got a 40-year member, you got somebody <laughs> serious. When you got somebody who stuck with the church through the ups, the downs, the thick, the thin, the turns around the corner, the changes, and you're still here even through a leadership change, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Most definitely. Most definitely. And even in that 40 years, I had a pause, but I went to one of the associate ministers' church who Reverend Chappelle assigned me to. Yeah. So. But I'm back home. Yeah. It just happened 12 years now, back. 12 years back. Ain't God good. Yes. That's what's up. So we're praying for the people this morning. Uh, we're in Proverbs chapter number 6, and we're in verse number 18. You can go ahead and type that in the chat. And it talks about six things the Lord hates, seven are an abomination to the Lord. He hates feet that run to mischief. He hates feet that are quick to running to evil. And so uh, I want to pray for individuals to slow down and think before we act. Then I want you to pray corporately for the church to be able to discern when we are supposed to move and when we're supposed to sit, be still, hear from God, and get wise counsel. Is that cool? That's cool. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, lift you, glorify you, magnify you, yes. praise you, lift you up, lift your name on high. You are worthy. Before we ask you for anything, we come to tell you how great you are, how marvelous you are, how mighty you are, how powerful you are. Because we have breath inside of our bodies, we praise you. We praise you not for anything material, but because we're still breathing and we're still yes. alive. Satan tried to kill us. He tried to wipe us out. He tried to destroy us. But the fact that we still can inhale and exhale says that we are still here. Satan, in spite of your plans, we are here. In spite of your plots, we are here. In spite of your schemes, we are here. In spite of your tricks, we are still here. And we dare not have breath in our bodies and not give you, God, all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. So, God, we know that there's coming a day when we will know longer have breath inside of our bodies but with every breath that we breathe we shout hallelujah with every hallelujah. inhale with every exhale we say lord you are worthy with every inhale with every exhale father god god we just bring honor and glory to your name this morning we forget about ourselves we concentrate on you and we worship you god i pray for every individual that is on the prayer line this morning. Your word says there are six things the Lord hates, seven are an abomination to you. Align us with your heart, Jesus. So much so that we hate what you hate and that we love what you love. Align us with your heart. Where we can hate sin, but be friends to the sinner. To be able to win them right now in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. Align us with your heart. God, I'm reminded that sometimes when we're driving our car, our car drives funny because it needs a front end alignment. Many of us need an alignment. We need an alignment of our mind. Help us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need a, an alignment of our heart right now in the name of Jesus that we would Feel the heart of God. That we would not just know what you think and you feel, but that we would actually be able to feel it and empathize you. What breaks your heart, Lord? Let it break our heart. You hate feet that run to mischief. Feet that are quick to get into trouble. Because you hate it, help us to hate it. 
God, I'm reminded of Paul. He said, the things I would do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing. The things I hate doing, I end up doing. I know it's wrong, but I keep going down that route. Oh, wretched man am I. Yes, Lord. When I would do good, evil is always present, and somebody's in that predicament. The things we hate, we Mm. end up doing, God. The things you hate, and we hate, we end up doing. God, somebody has said, God, if you get me out of this, I ain't going to never do it again. God, and we find ourselves right back in the same situation. We come against every demonic stronghold yes, that will Lord. cause and influence our feet to run towards evil. Sometimes we don't even walk towards it. We run towards it. Sometimes we don't walk towards it, God. We hurry towards evil paths of destruction. There's a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is destruction. Give us discernment between the two. Hallelujah. And God, teach us to slow down. Yes, Lord. Teach us to think before we act. Mm. Teach us to slow down, to hear you, to spend time with you. Let us humble ourselves that when you speak to us, grant us ears to hear, hearts to obey. Let us humble ourselves, whether you choose to speak to us directly or indirectly through people. Sometimes we believe you, but we, do, we don't believe the prophets you see and the people that you see and to speak into our lives. Help us to recognize when you're speaking through people, God, even if it's a gentle rebuke or a strong rebuke. Father God, to keep us from running to evil. And God, we pray this over individuals, but then we pray corporately for our church that we would be able to discern when we're to slow down and receive counsel juxtaposed to us acting. We pray this right now. Father God, in your name, first, I just want to give you praise and glory for being the most high. God, thank you for being our keeper. Lord God, thank you for being faithful. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, thank you for being the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to be an example to us here in the earth realm, Lord God. God, I pray right now for the corporate church throughout this nation, throughout the world, Lord, that we will take representing you well, Lord God, that every day when we go about our way, we will be thinking about how we can represent the kingdom well as Jesus showed us as he was here. Lord, he did it through love. We must lead with love first. So, Lord, I pray for us to have wisdom, Lord God, to discern, to call on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us as you left it here for us. Lord, let us to be quick, Lord God, to hear and slow to speak, Lord God. Give us when to speak, how to speak, if it should be us speaking it, because we don't need to carry every message, Lord God. God, let us just seek you. Lord, let us study your word, Lord God. Let us be sensitive to you. Let us be sensitive to who we're speaking to, Lord God. Let us be gentle, Lord God. Let us know when to cry loud and spare not, Lord God. God, let us know when to be silent. Lord, Lord. let us know when to get away, to steal and pray, to fast and pray, Lord God. And I pray right now, Lord God, that the corporate church will spend more time fasting, Lord God, because some of these things we're battling in the earth realm, Prayer is good, but we got to add some fasting, Jesus. Lord God, to it, Lord God. God, we got to get away. Lord, the only way to tear down the principalities that are in the air and over regions, Lord God, is for us to be committed. So, Lord, I pray that we be committed, Lord God, that we slow down. Lord God, that we examine our lives and see what we don't need to be doing, Lord God, so we can give time to you. One way the enemy steals us, Lord God, is by getting us so busy, Lord God. We're doing everything. So, Lord, let us learn to prioritize, Lord God, so we can spend time with you, Lord God. I read somewhere this week, Lord God, that the one way to stay hungry for you is to stop snacking on sin. So, Lord, let us stop being sin snackers and start eating your word, Lord God, so that we can have power, Lord God. I remember something Pastor Chappelle used to say, little power it's through little prayer. Mm. But if you want much power, much you got to do much prayer. Jesus. And he also used to say, if you have two dogs in a fight, the one you feed the most is going to win. Jesus. So if we feed our flesh, that's going to win every time. And we'll be running to evil. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let us make you a priority. Let us make our salvation a priority, knowing that we may be the first book of the Bible that someone reads. And we want to make sure we represent well. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, regard of the, the, the nominations, 
every church that's open in the name of of you who believe on the Lord Jesus, that he died for our sins, that he has ascended back into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God. Let us be unified in the fact that we are yours and we are known by our love and we should be known by our obedience. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this. And Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just lift up to you every prayer that is in the chat. This yes, morning, Lord. I'm not praying that you answer these prayer requests. Yes, Lord. I'm thanking you for testimonies. Amen. God, Amen. we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, the blood Lord. of the Lamb has already been shed. The only thing yes. left to do is to share our testimony. So Hallelujah. many times we don't share our testimony because we allow Satan to get us into shame and condemnation of our past. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you convict, but you do not condemn. Yes. Father God, condemnation says that I'm wrong. Conviction says what I did was wrong. Yes, Lord. And so, God, Satan wants to isolate isolate us and make us feel like we're the only somebody going through what we're going through. And because we mm. feel isolated, we're afraid to talk about what you have brought us out of. But God, I'm reminded of the psalmist. He said, God, when you deliver me, I'm going to shout it before the entire congregation public, publicly. So God, we're asking for deliverance this morning. Deliverance this morning. Deliverance Hallelujah. this morning. Yes. God, we're asking for deliverance because we're not going to keep our mouths shut. We're not going to keep our mouths yes, closed. Lord. God, but we would shout it out and tell the world that you are a healer, Hallelujah. that you are a deliverer, that you are a way maker, yes, that you are Lord. a miracle worker, that you are a promise yes, keeper, Lord. that Hallelujah. you are a light in the darkness, God. Yes. God, we will not shut our mouths. Hallelujah. God, we will share our testimony yes, and others Lord. will be encouraged and Hallelujah. all will see how great, how great is our God. We have yes, these and many other blessings and we consider it done. We thank you that it's done in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen and Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. What a powerful time of amen. prayer. Amen. Yes, yes. Yeah, you believe prayer still works? Oh, yeah. Pray. I know prayer works. I don't we believe it. I know it. Work. Oh, we? tell me about it. Cover by the saints. Yeah. Hey, even though they didn't know as much as we did about the word. Yeah. They knew enough to pray us over. They knew enough to pray. And guess what? God heard their prayers. He heard it. And he answered their prayers. That's amen. That's a beautiful thing. Still living on them. You're right. You're right. Still <laughs> living on them. Yeah. Hey, if you're tuning in this morning, make sure you tap the share button that is on your screen. Share this prayer call with everybody you know. A link is going to pop up. Forward it to five people in your contacts. Text message or email and invite them to pray. Text star to one 270 You'll be on our text messaging list. Get the news firsthand before it ever hits the TV, the radio, social media. Get it firsthand by way of your cell phone. I need you to type in the chat Proverbs 6, verse 18. Proverbs 6, verse 18. Six things the Lord hates, seven are an abomination to him. And the one that we're talking about today that he hates, he hates feet that run to mischief. He hates feet that are quick to run to evil. If he hates it, we should hate it. Put that in the chat. He hates feet that run to evil. Hates feet that run to evil. Now, when I think about this scripture, I think about something that David wrote in Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may not have heard Proverbs 6, 18, but we heard Psalm 23. For Verse sure. 4, David says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. So the valley has evil, and David is walking through it. Didn't want to be in it, but since I'm in it, God making me walk through it. This scripture says there are people who are not walking through the valley of evil, but there are people who are actually running towards evil. David's walking through it. This scripture says people are running towards it. Why do you think, why do you think that sometimes we don't shun evil, but we literally like run towards it? Because Sin can feel good. Ooh, talk about that. Sin can really feel be good. Honest, be honest. I mean, let's just be real. Is, but yeah, you know, I'm going to use sex. Yeah. It can feel good. Yeah. But it's out of order. Yeah. Then you get caught up in it, and you just keep running back, running back. Yeah. But what we don't realize is that it's going to cost us something. Yeah. And it's specifically what you're talking about is fornication, like yeah, sex outside fornication. of marriage. Yeah, fornication, yes. So, so even as you give that analogy, I, I, I think about how candy tastes good. Yeah. And I, sometimes my little babies won't eat real food because they had so much candy. But although it tastes good, it rottens their teeth to the core when they have too much of it. And sometimes, if we're honest, sin can feel good. But we don't realize the damaging effects that it has to us. So much to the point that we end up running 
towards sin. Running fast towards sin. Lord have mercy. And that's just something that we do. You know, we get caught up in the flesh. But another part of that, Pastor, I think the reason we run towards sin, because Satan comes in and we he dangles this carrot in front of us and we try to eat that, not realizing that this void that we need to fill is something that only God can fill. Mm. But Satan brings this worldly thing and we gravitate to that. Yeah. And I think that's because too often believers are silent. Oh, that's so good. Because, you know, people in the street, they be like, come on to the party. Yeah. Let me tell you about this. Mm -hmm. I'll take this drink. But in the church, oh, they in church. I ain't going to say nothing to them. So that being said, isn't it amazing that, that, that we don't have to beg people to talk about what they like? So when they say, come on to the party, guess what? It's because I like the party. Definitely. But when we switch over and we live for Jesus, we have to beg people. We claim we love Jesus so much. We claim we like Jesus so much. <laughs> yeah, we're begging people to tell somebody else about Jesus. Why is that? I think it's because, number one, Generally, the person you're going to be talking to is probably somebody you was hanging out there with, mm. and you like, they're going to be bringing my old life up. But if you really changed, you'll be a testimony to them. That's good. And also, I think that there's a shame now yeah. with being a believer. Yeah. There's a shame that comes with it. If you look at this world, mm. it's anti-believer. Ooh, it's anti-believer. It's anti-believer big time. We're becoming more and more unchristian. You know what I say? Yeah. If God don't punish the world, mm. he going to owe Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You know, when, when you talk about that shame to being uh, a believer and a Christian, uh, I'm reminded of what Paul said in Romans 1 16. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Most definitely. Um, you only talk about what you're not ashamed of. Think about the worst thing that we've done in our life. Times when, when, when I was quick to running to Mischief. mischief. When yeah. I had those feet that were quick to run to it, I'm a pastor, but I have done some things in my life that I don't want nobody to know about. Say that. And I'm ashamed to talk about it. Yet, I should not hold any shame when it comes to telling people about Jesus, but sometimes we're just we're shameful about it, and we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. You know, we forget that we overcome by telling our testimony. Yeah. And it helps us because when you're talking about it, Satan knows he can't hold it on you. Yeah. Also, somebody else sitting out there, they're struggling with that thing. Mm. And when you're keeping it inside, you're keeping them from being delivered. Yeah. And I think about, Pastor, not telling your testimony or sharing the word. When we stand before the judgment, yeah. it's coming up again. Man, yeah. you sat there and didn't say anything. Oh, man. What about that? That is so good. That's so good. So... Uh, you joined under the leadership of Pastor Chappelle, and he used to talk about sin. Oh, yes. And uh, he used to have this, this phrase. He had a, several phrases, but one I remember, uh, this is why you don't want to have feet that are quick to run to mischief and evil and sin. He says because sin, <laughs> sin will make you go further than you want to go. Oh, yeah. It'll make you stay longer than you want to stay. It'll make you pay more, more than, than you, you want to pay. pay. Come on, talk about it. Oh, that. yeah, most definitely. Most definitely, because what it is, we don't know what the consequence of sin is. Mm -hmm. And the Bible does say we reap what we sow. That's good or bad. Yeah. So you may, you and I can do the same sin. I may reap a harder reaping than you. Yeah. So we tend to think, well, they got away with it. Yeah. They got away with it. Well, guess what? When it comes down to you, and I often equate this generally, for the majority of time, if you've been raised in church, mm. you got some of the word. Wow. So you're not going to be able to get away with what somebody that don't have the word get away with. Exactly. So we take those chances and not realizing that we could drop dead right then. Mm. You know something else your, uh, Pastor Chappelle did for me? He really got me to study in the word, mm. really bringing my Bible to church. Yes. Because he said, I could quote a lie if you ain't got your word. How do you know? <laughs> How do you know? How do you test the word of the preacher? How do you test the word of the prophet? If we're not studying the word of God for ourselves. So, so the Bible talks about Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 18. God hates feet that are quick to run to wickedness, quick to run to mischief and evil. Now, here's what's crazy about this. Solomon is the writer, and he's yeah. writing to his sons because he's experienced some things in life that he knows one day his sons may have the opportunity to experience. And basically what he's saying, don't do the same thing that I did. 
How important do you think it is for parents to be honest with their children and at the appropriate time help our children to understand, hey, I messed up. I messed up too. And and I'm telling you this because I don't want you to go down that same path. You know what, Pastor, that's very important. But let's back up to Solomon, the wisest man. Yeah. How did he end up later in life becoming a foolish man? Uh, see, he got that's just you. amazing, yeah. isn't it? So it goes to show you, you got to stay anchored. Yeah, got to stay anchored. To, to not go off course. But for our children, I've been very open with my kids about things I've gone through at the right time. And it wasn't about me being shamed. It was like, do I want to share this? I was like, yeah, I need to have this conversation. Because my goal is experience don't need to be your teacher. Mm, who say that? It's say, a hey, hard that teacher. Tech. Experience does not need to be your teacher. You need to listen to someone else. We got all the examples in the Bible. And we talk about, oh, I can't believe the children of Israel. We are they. Yeah. So we need to share with our children. If you mm. did it, you did it. Yeah. And guess what? Somebody in your family going to tell it anyway. Yeah. So you might as well confess. And in this world, with our kids with so much that they're up against, they need to know, number one, you can live a holy life yeah. young. I wish someone had drilled that in my head young. That's good. Because I think in the body of Christ, one reason we run swift to evil, because yeah. we kind of have an expectation. You're saved. But you're not going to be able to be holy. That's good. In closing, I want to ask you this question. Since God hates feet that are swift to run to mischief, evil, wickedness, and sin, how do we slow down? How do we slow down? We got to be intentional. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have to be intentional, because Satan don't want you to slow down. Mm -hmm. So he's always going to have a reason for you to be moving. So you got to slow down. You got to set aside time to spend with God. Come on, talk about it. And you need to come to church, yes. to the building, Come on, talk to about be it. among the other believers. Yes. When this church opened up after COVID, I was running here because I wanted to be among my fellow believers. Now, yeah. everybody that come to church ain't saved. But in the words of my daddy, if you keep coming, you either going to get saved or you're going to get gone. That's good. But. Come to church. Yeah. Being here. Getting a smile. Yeah. Getting a hug. Getting a touch. Yeah. You couldn't do that in COVID. You couldn't. Just being up, uplifted. Yeah. And that's the thing that will sustain you. You got to hear the word from being preached. You got to hear the word from study. And be a Berean. Pastor, no. I call him up. Wait a minute, Pastor. Explain to me what you said. Yeah. And you can ask those questions and get understanding. So we need to be intentional. Yeah. To keep from running from evil. The Bible says, Sean, yeah. run, take off. That's good. Don't even play with it. That's good. You're right. You're right. Flee fornication. That's right. Don't, Flee. Don't, don't fight it. Don't play with it. Run, far as run. Take off. Take off. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a blessing having you on. We got to run this back one day. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Enjoy yeah, it. I want to thank you from the bottom thank of you my for heart. Inviting me. And uh, listen, all roads lead to the Star Church Birmingham campus this Saturday, 9 a.m., for the grand finale of 21 Days of Prayer and Feasting. I want to see your face in the place, so mark your calendars and save the date. If you want to be a small group leader, go to the website, click the flyer you see on the screen, register your group. Several ways to be able to give God our best, not to a church, but through a church. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We're open. Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're open if you want to give in person, but those hours don't fit. We have a dry box open 24 hours a day at the main location. Come up the front steps, go to the left. Go to the brick part of the building. Look to the right. You will see the drop box. Mailing your cash, your checks, your money orders to 7400 London Avenue South, 35206. Give online, www.beatmetothestar.net forward slash give. Give by text. Text the amount that God has laid upon your heart to 855-912-7781. Cash app, dollar sign, beat me to the star. Venmo app, beat me to the star. Lord, take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bless the gifts and the givers. May they be used for the edification and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be the glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And everyone that agree with this prayer said amen, amen, and amen. God amen. bless you. See you soon.